All right, step one to this project is getting the decan cable, uh, preferably with the switch. Makes your life a lot easier if you have an E46, because otherwise you'd have to solder pins seven and eight. So if you don't have a switch, keep in mind you'll have to solder those pins together, otherwise it won't uh, recognize it on the programs. Uh, there'll be a link for this one below. So there's just a few steps. On Mac, you'll have to get a virtual machine to run Windows. And then after that, it's just installing all the BMW standard tools. All right, so the basic steps for making the virtual machine is just download virtual box by Oracle. And then you're just gonna download the Windows 7 ISO in the description and set that to the ISO image. Uh, reason we're using Windows 7 is just because it works the best with the drivers included. I tried XP, I've used XP before, but uh, something's changed where it just does not wanna work anymore and it won't recognize the cable. So uh, Windows 7 does work. So once you pick the ISO, It'll pretty much uh, set everything up itself. You just gotta change your host name, stuff like that. And then you can change how much RAM it uses. It doesn't really matter. Disk size, once again, I just keep it as is because uh, you don't need much space for this. And once you do that, you just click finish, it'll create it. And then you'll have to just go through the Windows installation step as if you're installing Windows on a new PC. Uh, other things you'll need to do is set up ports. So enable serial port, you'll need that for the cable. Same with this USB 2.0. You don't need that for the cable. I don't actually know if you need the serial port one, but I just enable it anyways. And then the next main thing is you have to share the files where all the BMW standard tools are gonna be. So you're gonna download all those links. They're all gonna be in one file. And then you will share that folder with the virtual machine as you can see it's being done here. And once you do that, you will be able to access those folders inside of the virtual machine and be able to install the standard tools and it makes it pretty seamless. All right, first thing you do once you have Windows installed is you gotta insert guest editions on the virtual machine. This is so you can actually access that shared file. Once you click that, you'll go to my computer and then there will be a new tab for the guest editions. You click on that, you run the install on that guy and then the uh, folder will pop up on your uh, computer tab so you can actually access all of these standard tools to be able to install them. All right, so the actual install of the standard tools is pretty straightforward. The only finicky part is sometimes the files might be missing a module here and there. Like I had a case where I was missing the airbag module for IMPA. So that's why I included Mike's Easy Tools as well. So that way you have an extra set of files for if something's missing, you can uh, delete them and swap over those files. And then hopefully one of the two will work. But for the actual install, pretty much just clicking next for everything the only thing you have to unclick is the uh, restore wizards you don't need that and the only other thing you need to click is for it to be usb to serial on this next page also the com port that you choose doesn't matter we'll uh, change that in the actual file later to match whatever com port it will end up being All right, so the next step is to delete the five files that were created when we installed the standard tools. Uh, these are all the German files and like default files, so you won't have expert profiles and everything will be in German. It'll be hard to understand. So what we'll do is go into the files that we downloaded, use the EC apps files, we'll copy and paste them into the C drive, and then that will work just like that. And most of the things at that point will be in English and you'll have access to things like the uh, expert profile in NCS expert. All 
The next step is to get the COM port set up. We'll have to go to the bin folder here and go to the OBD2 file so that we can change which COM port it's set to. You'll have to check your device manager, see where the cable is coming in. For me, it's COM port 3. So we click on this OBD, OBD uh, file. And then where it says port, it will say COM1 when you start it. Uh, I have to change mine to COM3 because that's where mine is. Yours could be COM2. Who knows? You have to take a look and change that. Otherwise, uh, it won't connect and you'll get faults like uh, no data transfer or like a VIN is faulty, something like that. So at this point on Mac, to make sure it pops up on the device manager, you have to go up to devices, USB, and click on the cable so that it recognizes it in the virtual machine. On Windows, it'll already be in the device manager. At that point, you'll go to device manager, and there are a couple of settings we need to tweak on the COM port that the cable is on to make sure it actually works with the programs. So you'll select the cable, and then you'll go to properties, so we can adjust those settings. So main thing, data bits should be set to eight. And then in advanced, the big one is latency needs to be set to one. If it's not set to one, you're gonna get a ton of errors. It won't work. So set that to one, and then you should be good to go at this point for the programs to work. Once you have it all installed, this is pretty much how it'll look like when you have it set up. You'll have your cable hooked to the OBD2 port, you'll have your virtual machine running, or just have Windows run on your laptop. And then from there, you can uh, run all the programs and do what you got to do. Now this is an example of if your cable isn't hooked up correctly, you'll get a bunch of errors like this where it just will not work. This is a case where the driver wasn't working on XP, which is why I moved over to Windows 7. Uh, another reason would be if your cable is not switched to the right selector switch section, or if you don't have a selector switch, uh, your pins 7 and 8 on an E46 would have to be soldered together. Uh, another issue would be if your latency wasn't set to 1, it will also do this. So those are all things to look out for. So this is just showing if everything works correctly on NCS Expert, you should be able to have it read your vehicle order. Uh, with your VIN and everything. Uh, if it says VIN is faulty, then it might be a cable issue or a file issue. Here's just me quickly uh, doing kind of what you do if you're trying to do a manual swap. Uh, 205 is the automatic module, so that's something you delete if you're doing a manual swap. So this is just showing some of the things you can do. And then on INPA, you can just read all the codes. So I use the clear airbag lights, stuff like that. If you have any questions or things you want to see programmed in the future, let me know. I can look into it and try to make better videos than this on that in the future. Uh, thanks for taking a gander at her.